NBC presents, transcribed, Frank Lovejoy in... Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. There's a certain party around town by the name of Panagin. He slugs out an acid column for Pierce's Gazette based on semi-truth, crumbs of political gossip, and backstage hearsay. All of it liberally spiced with sly comments on female anatomy. His major pitch is what he calls his target of the week in which some unfortunate citizen gets a six-day mud bath. As a result, those broken in Panagin's columns are beyond count. Well, last week, the color of his ink hit home and hard. Believe me, friends, it's something of a shock to pick up the opposition paper, only to read that you're a killer. I was pounding out the final paragraph a few hours from deadline when a copy boy burst into the city room and told me my boss man, Joe Phillips, wanted to see me quick. I walked up a flight of stairs, down a hall of frosted glass doors to one marked night editor. Phillips was leaning over his desk, his heavy brows squeezed into a familiar frown. The minute I came in, he picked up a clipping from the Pierce's Gazette and bade me take a chair. Sit down, Randy. Pleasure. What's up? You won't believe this. Even after you read it, you won't believe it. Well, let's hear it. Hold on to your seat. No surprise is the rumor that Randy Stone, Chicago Star newsman, triggered Harry the Slicker Barneson. What? There's more, Randy. It is said in the more authoritative circles here that the boys in blue rigged a confession from ex-con Johnny Liggett to protect the star's fair name. With Liggett due for electrocution tomorrow at 12.01... Wouldn't you say, Governor, that something should be done about this? The end. Let me see that. In black and white? Triggered Harry the Slicker Borenson. This must be a gag. You can buy that gag in any newsstand. Wow. Yeah, wow. I feel like somebody just smacked me in the basket. You look green, all right. Well, what's the answer? Nearest I can figure, Randy, it's that series you did on Borenson about six months ago. Four-time loser? That was the title. Oh, no, no, sir. You got any better ideas? That's your only connection with Borenson. Oh, this thing was picked straight out of the air. Why, I don't know. I never had a run-in with Pierce's Gazette. Of all the four million people in the city, why me? Maybe because you work for the Star, the Gazette's stiffest competition. But it's such an obvious lie, Philip. How can they hope to get away with it? Leggett was convicted of Borenson's murder. One, two, three. The jury was out 30 minutes. What about proof? How did you never let facts stand in his way? Whatever he gets into his head would be good for circulation. That's what he writes. That's why George Pierce keeps him on. He wants to get the star in a big feud, so Chicago will start talking about it and boost the Gazette up to our level. Well, we're not playing. You mean you're letting this go without a fight, not a word of denial? We can't get sucked into this thing, Rand. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This isn't just a personal matter between Panagin and me. The star is in it next deep. Look, Randy, I know how you feel, but everything we print, good or bad, means a big plug for Pierce's Gazette. Well, make me a bargain, Philip. If I dig up the Panagin story with facts, documented, authentic, if I bring you the whole story, will you print it? What kind of story? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the... Panagin and his big boss, George Pierce, are covering for somebody. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. I wouldn't put it past them. Well, what do you say? Well, if the story's really hot, okay. Thanks. Where are you going? I'm not about to laugh this off, Phillips. Randy, now, look, take it easy. Don't get yourself into trouble. In trouble? Listen, from now on, Panagin's my target of the year. I'm making him a cause. I'll write that disease out of this town if I have to use handbills. But frankly, I didn't feel much like brandishing the golden sword. I felt weak and sick, and I couldn't think. I went outside into the biting wind, hoping it would beat the nightmare out of my head. 
But the terror had taken hold and it wouldn't let go. It was the giant power of the lie issued in the loud voice of sound authority amplified by the press. That's the way to take the truth down the side. Let the public cry for blood just so you sell papers. Well, I walked. And all the time, a line kept singing its way through me, a line I used to chant to the other six-year-olds when I was a kid. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but names can never hurt me. That's a kid's line, strictly. All of which brought me to my favorite bar on LaSalle Street. Jet, the barkeep, demonstrated some awfully odd behavior. Hi, Jet. What's the matter with you? Nothing, nothing, matter. What? What are you staring at? You're not staring. It's going to wipe the square. Come on, Chet boy, out with it. What's the angle? Something wrong with my paper? No, 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 of course not, Mr. Stone. I'm not going to shake the cash drawer. <laughs> That's pretty good. Come on, speak up, friend. What's the beat? Look, Mr. Stone. I want you to know. I don't believe a word of it. The Panagen case? I told my, you know, little bartender. I told him you didn't even know Borenson. How could you have anything to do with the killing? Well, you were wrong, Chet. I did know it. You did? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. What's the talk? Well, Mr. Stone, you know how it is. People, they read something, they believe what they read. They figure anything's in the paper, it's got to be right, you know. Then lots of them. Liggett's confession to Borenson's murder, they figured it was cut and dried. Fakes, huh? Yeah, that cheap publicity gag the Gazette has. You see what they do now? They keep Carrington's real identity hidden, see? It's a big secret, see? So that none of the people he talks about get revenge on him. It's freedom of expression. That's what the papers call it. Freedom of expression, yeah. Ah, what am I telling you for? You know the story. But but that's the truth, Mr. Stone. This thing is pretty hot. You know how people are. They get all upset. They all want to be nice at the round table or something. Uh, I'd uh, be kind of careful if I was you. Uh, I mean, if I was you, I'd go home. Yeah, you never know with people, Mr. Stone. Oh. Well, I might do that, Jed. After I take care of a little business. What's the tab? <laughs> My business concerned the owner and publisher of Pierce's Gazette. I went to George Pierce's residence. I was told by a rather worried wife that the eminent publisher hadn't been home in 24 hours. He gave me the name of his favorite hangout, which I guess she was too proud to phone, and asked me if I found him, would I please tell him to come home? I said I would. He was there, all right. George Pierce, executive in the... Blue light of a cheap tavern pumping his royal bloatedness full of sherry, flushed and sweating in a tight tuxedo. I sat down uninvited between him and the jolly blonde, thus killing the punchline of a very old story. What are you talking about? That was your... <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Randy Stone. You remember me. Yeah, Chicago Stars, the worst paper in the country. So sit up. I'm already sat. Yeah, so you are. I'm sorry, this is Miss Leroy, Desmond Leroy, a songster. How are you? She's a singer, she doesn't talk. Besides, she's a little under the weather, aren't she? <laughs> I'll tell you all stay to the police, you confess yet. Where can I find this Panagen? Panagen is my little secret. Well, then you tell him that I want a big column in tomorrow's edition calling himself a liar. Why don't you take the matter to the court? Oh, you'd like that. Sell more papers that way. Oh, you're making me sick. On your way, killer. Mm. Oh, I'm going to love this. Let go, you crazy fool. What's the matter with you? My apologies, lady. When he gets up, tell him his wife wants him to come home. I'm no lover of the quick punch, but I'll admit it, I... Walked out of there feeling singularly better. A solid left for myself and a few thousand other newspapermen who still believe the morning bundle of trick was created for facts, honest comment, and the funny. 
It was almost morning. I went home. I pulled up a chair, propped my feet up on the windowsill, and stared out at Chicago at dawn. A swirl of soft snow circled the black pavement. A kid in corduroy knickers went by, bucking the wind, a bunch of papers under his arm. Peddling what? The news of the world or another pack of lies? I was so lost in the question, I hardly noticed the shadow move over the carpet. The saccharine fumes of cheap cologne. Then she came into the light. White cheeks spotted with rouge, penciled eyebrows. Too young for the makeup. But the gun in her fist was steady. You could tell the feel of it wasn't new to her. Yes, she was an old hand. How long have you been here? I thought you'd never get back. I work nights. You know me? Pauline Liggett. I didn't think you'd remember. The time I interviewed you and your husband. You asked me all kinds of questions. About what kind of a life did we live? I said we lived a nice kind of life before Johnny... He's going to die tomorrow. You know that, don't you? I know. You know he was framed, don't you? That wasn't the jury's opinion. If any kind of evidence the police want, they can cook it up like that. Including the bullet in Barnson's brain? Don't move. Yeah. Bullet. Anything. They can cook it up. About the confession, they cooked that up too? They tortured him to get that confession. He has marks on his arms, on his back. Who told you all this? I saw the marks. You think the police put them there? Who else would do a thing like that? The police didn't have to, Pauline. The evidence was all there. If there were marks, he put them there himself. For sympathy. I knew that's what you'd say. I knew it. I expected exactly that. So, Johnny Liggett was framed. Because he's got a record. The police hate him. How did he get a record? Five years he served at Joliet. You know Why? He went to prison to help his brother. His brother stole a lot of money, and Johnny went to prison so his brother wouldn't have to. That's touching. And the two years in Leavenworth, Johnny served that for his brother, too? Listen, once they start framing you, just like Johnny says, you're the patsy from there on in. They always put the finger on you. You haven't got a chance. Why don't you tell the governor about all this reserve honesty? The lawyer's taking care of all that. Mm-hmm. Now... What's the gun for? I went down to the jail and I saw him. I asked him, I said, Johnny, now you tell me the truth. Did you do it, Johnny? And he looked at me and he said, No, Pauline, I swear to you, he said, I never done a thing like that. It's like everything else, he said, a frame. Pauline, use your head. Why would I kill Boris? I don't know why you killed him. How should I know? Maybe over some kind of deal you had with him. Money, maybe, or a girl, maybe. But this Mr. Pierce and this guy Panagin that writes for him. There for the little guy. Always for the little guy, like Johnny. You want to believe that story awful bad, don't you, Pauline? It's true. The whole thing is true. Sure, it fucks the evidence. All the logic. But it's true. Yeah, I'll bet it looks real fine all printed up. And they put it up in black and white and charge people money to read it. It sounds like a lot of truth, doesn't it? Like the state's attorney. You talk good, Mr. Stone. Dan is going to die tomorrow night. An awful lot of me is going to die with him. But you aren't going to have a chance to sit back and laugh. At 1201, they killed Johnny. At 1201... I kill you. NBC is bringing you Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Here's an important message for employers, personnel directors, in fact, anyone who's in a position to hire people. Disabled workers have learned how to take care of themselves. They know how to avoid accidents on the job. And why not? They've gone through one period of suffering, and they certainly don't want another. Another result? Well, they observe your safety rules to a T. And what's more, 
you'll find they furnish the enthusiasm and leadership for putting across your safety programs with a bang. Now, do you think this is just theory? Certainly not. It's been proved time and time again by surveys conducted the nation over. Those surveys showed without exception that handicapped workers have better safety records than able-bodied workers doing the same job. That's right. Better safety records. And so, Mr. Employer, hire the handicapped. Do it now. The local office of your state employment service will be glad to help you. And now, back to Night Beat and Randy Stone. At 12.01, Johnny Liggett would die in the electric chair. At 12.01, according to his wife's schedule, I'd join her husband in bed. The clock. Her gun. 11.30 p.m. 31 minutes to Johnny Liggett's death. And mine. Pauline's face was set, her jaw tight. All I could see was hate. What time is it? 11.32. Hungry? No. You want me to... Shut up. I got some cheese in the right. I don't want any. You think killing me is going to help him? You did your talking, now shut up. You should be trying to help him. I'm not going to tell you again. Was he good to you? Always good to you. Ever asked him where he got his money? He worked. Where? Where did he work? All kinds of jobs. You've handled a gun before. We used to go out to the Indiana Dunes. You and Johnny? Target practice. Mm hmm. Please, huh? It's a week old. Get up. Go on. No tricks. I'm good with this. No tricks. Open the icebox. Open the icebox. Give it to me. No, leave it where it is. I'll get it. Get away from the door. Go on. American cheese. That's right. It's right out. A week old, like I said. Poison, maybe. A killer like you. Maybe. I'll take my chances. No bread? Just cheese. Go on back. Sit down. What time is it? 11.33. And a half. So slow, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Slow. Yeah. But it keeps going. And you're going to look at that clock every minute and tell me what time it is. Just like Johnny. Watching the clock. Maybe he's just playing cards. Hey. What's it like? What's what like? Does it hurt? Well, nobody knows. Maybe they never see a thing. Maybe there's one split second when they... Nobody knows. They serve the head. Yeah. Can they do that to Johnny? Why don't we drop the subject? I want you to live through the whole thing like he's done. You ever been to an electrocution? I've been to one, yes. You know about it, then. I know all about it. You're sick, Pauline. Listen, you said everything you're going to say. You talked yourself blue all morning, all afternoon. Now shut up. Just shut up. You want to do the same thing to you that's going to do to Johnny? Listen, now. You You asked me that. Shut up. What time is it? 11.34 and a half. Keep watching that clock. The captain's ready now. Probably. Reading. What can they read to him? The 23rd Psalm. It helps. I'm not going to cry. He never liked it when I cried. The Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
to make us me to lie down in green pasture. He lead us me beside the still waters. He restore us my soul. He guide us me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The papers are out. Panagin's column. Don't you want to read it? I'll read it. After. As a last request. No. Even Johnny will get a last request. The paper boy is coming back. The other side of the street. No sail. Maybe a party. Not in a million years. You never can tell. Call out the window before he goes away. Don't move. I got my eye on you every second. Boy! Paper here. I've got change. Don't move. Don't move, I said. Apartment three. Right up, lady. One word. One word and I'll do it. When he comes to the door, you just sit there because I don't care, Mr. Stone. It's nothing to me what happens. If he sees me do it or if he doesn't. You're shaking. What time is it? 11.36. 11.37. You think you're the perfect woman, don't you, Paul? Well, A guy sheds all his sins just because you love him. He's not perfect. But he's not a killer. Grow up, Pauline. Your husband took a gun and shot a man. You were at the trial. I heard all the lies, Mr. Now shut up. Johnny was an innocent man. Present tense, Pauline. He's still alive. That's right. He's still alive. Not a word. Paper man? Here you are. Thank you. I see what Tonagin has to say. I like to read my own publicity. I'll do the reading. Hannigan's notebook. Let's hear it. I can read and watch you, too. Read it. A few hours from now, Johnny Liggett, convicted of the murder of Harold Borenson two months ago, will die in the electric chair on California Avenue. Go on. I visited the condemned man in his cell today. He told me he wants everyone to know he did not kill Harold Borenson. I am an innocent man. He said he holds no grudge against the man who did the killing. He'll be punished, Liggett said, but I forgive him. Is that all Panagin has to say? Liggett asked me to take care of his wife, Pauline. I haven't been a good husband to her. I wish I told her about the other... Women. A long time ago. I do woman. Last minute confession. Another woman. It's a lie. It's a dirty lie. Panagin? Panagin never lies, Pauline. Johnny always said to me there never was anybody but you, Pauline. He always said that. You better make up your mind, Pauline. Huh? If Panagin's a liar... Another woman... If Johnny went with another woman, Panagin's telling the truth. If he didn't, Panagin's a liar. He's a liar. If he's a liar, Pauline, then he lied about a lot he's of He's a things. liar. Johnny wouldn't do that to me. Give me the gun, No, Pauline. stay away. Stay away from me. Don't you come near me. Stay away. Listen to don't me, Don't you talk to me. I don't want you talking to me. The whole city knows about it now. The city knows all about the way he cheated on you. They're sorry for you. They're all saying, isn't it a shame? She has to find out just before her husband dies in the electric chair that he was cheating on her all the time. Just because somebody printed a lie. He loved me. Johnny loved me. You're right, Pauline. He loved you very much. He couldn't do a thing like that when he loved me so much. Sure, he loved you that much. And a man who loved you that much couldn't do that to He couldn't have been seeing another woman. It's a dirty lie. Everything's a lie, Pauline. Everything they said. They lied about both of us. Now, give me that gun. You come with me. Where are you going? You come with me. Now, wait a minute. Liars! They make me so ashamed! Liars! 
He wasn't sane anymore. The truth and the lie, reality and the dream were mud in her mind. Her eyes gleamed shame, anger, hate, all melted into madness. She forced me out into the car at the curb. And talking myself out of my own killing, I talked her into another. Our destination? The home of Panagin's boss, George Pierce. It was 11.55 when he reached Pierce's residence. He answered the door, blinking into the darkness, his tiny eyes buried in sweet, puffy flesh. His boat was wrapped in a silk dressing gown, his feet in carpet slippers. He was scratching himself. Hey, Susan. Get inside. Hurry up. He's got a gun, George. So, I look here. Get inside. He's right. I've got a gun. Pauline, listen. Inside. Business look at that. Dirty liar. Liar? Your paper. Well, what's the trouble, Mrs. Liggett? Another woman. Now, listen, Mrs. Liggett, maybe just for human interest, Panagin might have said something. Human interest? Look, why don't we go into the library and have a drink? You you look like you could use the drink, Mrs. Liggett. He's going to die tonight. He's going to die in you. All you care about is human interest. You write things like that about him. Making off like I wasn't a good wife. Nobody ever loved anybody like Johnny loved me, Mr. Pierce. Nobody. We'll send a full retraction, Mrs. Liggett. I know about Panagin, too. There is no panic, and everything that goes into that column is yours, Mr. Pierce. Every dirty line of it. Now, Mrs. Liggett. You're panicking, aren't you? Mrs. Liggett, please. You're the liar, aren't you? No, Mrs. Liggett. I, I, I didn't even see the Dirty liar! Mrs. Liggett, please. 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 Mrs. Twelve o'clock. <laughs> Confess Killer Liggett died in a chair last night. And his wife will be tried for murder. Her attorneys were pleased that she didn't know right from wrong or true from false. I wouldn't be surprised if the court went along with them. But by the same token, did you pass the test? How good are you at telling the lie from the truth? Does the truth vary according to your personal convenience? Black one day, white the next? The next time you read anything, ask yourself... I have the right to doubt. Am I using it? Because it's too dangerous living in a world of misinformed people. There's a reason why the lie is the tyrant's favorite death weapon. It's killed more people since the world began than all the armies and the automobiles put together. Copy, boy. Nightbeat, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and directed by Warren Lewis. Tonight's transcribed story was written by David Ellis, with music by Robert Armbruster. The part of Pauline was played by Joan Banks. Others featured were Bill Conrad, Peter Lee, and Lou Krugman. Listen next week at this time, and every week, as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. Nightbeat came to you from Hollywood.